so good on camera. Wow, dude. My name's Aiden Robbins. I'm a filmmaker. I make videos here on Adorama TV. And last month, my good friend Eric and I shot a video all about volcanoes in Italy. That included the quite famous Vesuvius and Etna, but we devoted the biggest chunk of the shoot to capturing footage of Stromboli, this little volcanic island off the coast of Sicily. What's unique about this island is its continuous eruptions, with small explosions of lava every five to 10 minutes. That meant ample opportunity to capture footage of eruptions with one problem. This is the closest we can get. So how can we get good footage from almost a mile away from our subject? And how can we get creative with lighting and composition to create a variety of footage from a single vantage point? Those are the main questions that I want to tackle here, but I'll also dip into how we captured the eruptions, like really bringing out the red glow of the lava and capturing the intensity of such a phenomenon. The closest we could hike to the vent was this overlook about halfway up the mountain, and here the process was very simple. Just set up several static shots and continuously record until lava comes out. The file sizes were pretty bad on this project. I took my Peak Design tripod along with this baby tripod from Polar Pro. These static shots involved a lot of guesswork around composition since we couldn't fully predict how high the explosions would be in the frame. A lot of my first clips are not the greatest because I framed the vent too low and the lava just went right out of the top of the frame. Pretty quickly we figured out we needed to intentionally place the horizon line very close to the bottom of the frame, something you probably wouldn't normally do for a landscape frame. Setting exposure also took some guesswork, trying to balance between very bright lava and very dark surroundings. Again, a lot of my first shots are not quite usable because the background looks good and then the lava is just way too bright. So we figured out pretty quickly we needed to deliberately underexpose quite a bit. Again, something I would almost never do. Each day we hiked up right before sunset and about an hour before sunrise. That way we could shoot through blue hour, which gave us a nice variety of lighting. During sunset, the glow of the lava wasn't quite visible, but the ash and gas coming from the vents was more noticeable. So a couple of these shots still got used. Then there was this sweet spot during blue hour when the light was bright enough to illuminate the surroundings, but dark enough that that lava really glowed and created a strong color contrast. A little later, the stars came out, which made for some interesting shots. And once the light completely faded, we got these more abstract shots where the lava is the only light source. This was very low light shooting. I was using my Lumix S5 as usual, which did a good job, but wasn't really any match for Eric's Sony a7S III, which captured more of our usable footage, including all of the shots of the stars. Sitting around watching these explosions was a great time, but after a while, it did start to feel like we were getting the same shot over and over and over again. We started experimenting with composition, using my Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter lens to go super wide and show the entire island, and my Lumix 70 to 200 millimeter lens to go really tight where the lava completely filled the frame. We shifted away from just the main vent and started shooting distant explosions from other vents. Tried some shots incorporating some foreground. Shot the same angle at three different focal lengths to make this long zoom effect. Went handheld and started messing around with some camera motion. Took a boat out to shoot the explosions from a different angle with the water in the foreground. But still, the biggest limitation of shooting from the ground was that we couldn't get close. So to get some closer angles, naturally, I got out the drone, my usual DJI Air 3. That made for a whole lot of new angles, shooting very close to the vents, following the movement of the lava downhill, shooting from above. My approach here was still pretty similar to shooting from the ground. Just pick an angle and record continuously until something happens. These were either completely static shots or simple continuous movements like slowly orbiting around the vents or repeatedly moving forward and back. I tried to frame these shots such that all three vents would be in the shot at the same time. Of course, I was hoping that the one closest to the camera would go off, but this way an eruption from any vent would be in frame. Of course, a big part of not getting the same shot over and over again was just shooting things other than the eruptions, like the steaming fumaroles and strange volcanic features, wide shots of the entire island, 
and this cute village at the base of the volcano. Once we had shot everything, I pulled out a few tricks in the edit to help enhance this footage a bit further. One of our evenings shooting the volcano was very windy, giving the static shots this jittery camera shake. I thought it looked pretty cool, almost like the eruptions were shaking the ground. So I used the wiggle effect and after effects to replicate it on most of the other shots. I also wanted my color grade to further highlight that color contrast between the red lava and the blue surroundings. The ash and gas came out looking yellow on camera, so I used the hue curves to desaturate the yellows and greens. That left the clouds almost completely gray and helped that red lava to pop out. I used elliptical masks on a few shots to warm up the area around the vents and added a pretty strong vignette to most of the shots to further darken the scene surrounding that bright lava. And finally, I used the color wheels to push blue into the shadows, creating even more color contrast and helping that red lava to pop out further. Being able to visit and capture places like this is a ridiculous privilege. I feel like locations like this almost photograph themselves, like you don't have to jump through hoops to get a good shot. But there's another side to that coin in that many of the best images are right on the other side of experimentation, of taking the time to step back, move around, and try different angles, or coming back in different lighting. There are beautiful images everywhere, but not all of them jump out right away. You have to find them. And the craft of filmmaking is not just a way of capturing those images, it's a way of looking for them. When I have the opportunity to visit a place like this, I'd often find myself shooting the same thing over and over again. So I've been trying to build that habit of getting that low hanging fruit shot, but then looking around. And almost always I find a whole lot more right outside the edge of the frame. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV for thousands of other videos just like this one, including a couple dozen that are really just like this one, where we go to cool places and talk about the craft of filmmaking. Thank you for watching this one, and I will see you in the next one.